Welcome to Electron Line. The next concept we're going to talk about is what we call the vector element of an area. Normally we think of an area of a surface or a small infinitesimal area of a surface as simply being a dA. But if we want to talk about it in terms of vector quantities, we have to have an area and a direction. So here we have a small little area element on top of a surface. So imagine there's a surface right here in a three-dimensional universe, so to speak and we have a small little area segment and then we want to also express the direction of that segment and we do that by having a perpendicular unit vector from the surface of that area element off into space like that. The direction of that is determined because it could be in the other direction but direction is determined that if you have the curvature of a surface like that you want to be on top of the surface you take your right hand rule you move your fingers around in a counterclockwise direction around the surface and then your thumb will be pointing upward so we can see here that the direction of dA would be out of the surface. We're going to call this little element right here, we're going to call that a dA so we put a little vector symbol on it which means we multiply the unit vector which is the direction perpendicular to the surface at that location times a small little infinitesimal area called dA. So that's what we call a vector element of an area. Notice here that we've written down that the direction of the unit vector is determined by the right hand rule. Simply move your fingers around in a counterclockwise direction around the little dA element and then your thumb will point in the direction of the unit vector. Notice we can now express the unit vector in terms of the x, y and z coordinates like this. For example, we can then have a projection of this onto the, well, just a moment, let's take a look here. Notice that dAx, which is what we have over here, is equal to dy times dz. It's a projection of the area element right here, and we do not have the dA sub x on the drawing here because I only have the daz and the day. So let's go to those two first. The day is the projection of the element onto the xz plane. So here's the xz plane. If we take the small dA element here and we project that onto the xz plane, we end up with a day. This will then indicate the area projected onto the xz plane. If we want to find daz, that is the area element projected onto the xy plane, and then obviously the dAx would be projected onto the yz plane, which I don't have pictured right here. The yz plane would be in the back and it would then be projected into the board like that and I did not do that. Now that we know that what those are, we can then see that we can have the projection onto the yz plane, the projection onto the xz plane and the projection onto the xy plane of the area element multiplied by the x unit vector, the y unit vector, the z unit vector and that in summation then equals the small area element in vector format. We can also express each of these projections in terms of what we call the direction cosines. If we let L sub x, L sub y, and L sub z be the direction cosine from the unit vector to the x-axis, from the unit vector to the y-axis, from the unit vector to the z-axis, these then become the direction cosines, and we can then have the area element projected onto the yz plane expressed as dA sub x equals the, what we call the direction cosine multiplied by the area of dA. The daY, which is the projection onto the xz plane, can be expressed as the direction cosine multiplied times a small little area, and we can then take the daZ, which is the projection of dA onto the xy plane, as the z component of the direction cosine. In other words, it's the angle, it's the cosine of the angle between the unit vector and the xy plane, and that's how we express daz. We can also think of the direction cosines as being the components, the x, the y, and the z component of the unit vector. It's one and the same thing. It'll be a fraction between 0 and 1. So we can express now the area element in vector format as the direction cosine from the unit vector to the x-axis times the size of the little d area multiply times the x unit vector, or you can call it the i unit vector. Same here, we have the direction cosine between the unit, unit vector of the area element and the y-axis times the size of the dA, multiplied times the unit vector in the y direction, and again the same in the z direction. 
or if you don't like the direction cosines, you simply can call it the x, the y, and the z components of the unit vector, so that would be the magnitude of those, a number between 0 and 1, times the area element, and multiply times the x, the y, and the z direction. And that's different ways in which you can write the area element in vector notation. So now we have an idea of what that is. In the future, we'll show you how to actually use those and implement those in various operations, including integrals and so forth. But at least now you have a concept of what that actually is and how we can move forward to the next concept.